Hi, boys and girls. We are going to begin by turning to page 188 in your Journeys Reader's Notebook, Grade 1, Volume 2, Practice Book. So as soon as you do that, we shall begin. So we are going to begin with reading these words because on our assignment, we're going to be adding ed, ing, er, est, and es to words. So I wanted to just do a little review on that. So let's go ahead and just say these words with me. Are you ready? We're going to be listening for the endings. Are you ready? Pet. Petted. Petting. Okay, so now we're going to circle the endings. So let's go ahead and circle the ED. That's an ending. And the ING. That's an ending. Okay, so I want you to see how to keep the short sound that you hear in pet, the E eh sound. You had to double the final consonant. So this T right here. If you would have not doubled the final T, it would have said peated. This E would have made that E say its name, but you wanted to keep it short sound. So just double the consonant. So petted, the same for petine. You had to double the final consonant. Double means you put two of them to keep that ing from making that e say its long sound. It says petine, but if you didn't put that t there, it would say petine. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with these. Okay, let's read these. Big, bigger, and biggest. Well, let's circle the endings. In bigger, the ending is er. And in biggest, the ending is est. And we had to, again, double the final consonant. Here's the final consonant, the g. We had to double it. That means we had to make two g's before we added the er or the EST, or it would have said biger. It literally would have said biger. If you don't put that extra G in there, it'll say biger, because that's what E's do to, um, to vowels. That would have said by guest. So be sure to realize you have to double the final consonant when before you add ER and EST, if it's going to make that say it's long sound. Okay, and finally we have the word wishes. What's the ending of wishes? The little word part at the end? It's ES, wishes. So now let's just underline the the base words. Okay, so this is the base word pet. In petted, the base word is pet. In petting, the ba base word is pet. Pet is the base word. In big, well, big is the base word. Bigger, what's the base word in bigger? Big. What's the base word in biggest? Big. Okay, and the base word in wishes is wish. Okay, I think that little lesson will, will help us be able to understand what's going on here. Um, actually, on this one, it didn't even have any of that where, where you needed to have the the letters um, doubled, because in the word small, it already is doubled. Okay, so we have smaller, jumped, riding, highest, and foxes. Okay, those trees are the hmm hmm of all. Those trees are the highest of all. So I'm going to first write the word high. That's our base word. High. Then I'm going to add our... Um, our ending, highest. Those trees are the highest of all. That bird is hmm hmm than this one. That bird is smaller than this one. So we're going to write our base word first, small. 
Then we're going to add our suffix. They're also called um, word parts that go at the end. They're suffixes. Okay, so that bird is smaller than this one. Who is hmm, a red bike? Who is riding a red bike? Riding. This is a perfect example of how you have to really discriminate. Like if I would have put two D's on riding, it would have said ridding. But because I didn't, it says riding. Who is riding a red bike? A frog, hmm, into the pond. A frog jumped into the pond. We're going to write our base word, jump. Jump. And then we're going to write our suffix, our, our ending. You spell it ed, but it makes the t sound. A frog jumped into the pond. Five, hmm, ran to the woods. Five foxes. So here's our base word, fox. And then we're going to put our word ending. ES, it's a suffix. Makes it mean more than one. Five foxes ran to the woods. Okay, over here I had a little fun. We don't do these, but I thought if you were going to do it, you might have some fun. So it says that the robins were making fun of the kite. And it says to draw a cartoon and to draw a frog and to make a speech bubble. So in my cartoon, I have frog and I have the three mean robins. And so it says to make a speech bubble to show what he says to the robins. Okay, so they were making fun of the kite. So I would say something like, mind your own business or putting down our kite is not helping or there's nothing wrong with this kite you know just sort of like telling the truth or if you can't say something nice don't say anything at all I don't know what you're gonna say what would you say to those robins you know frog and toad don't deserve that those robins were disrespecting their kite they can't be around those birds okay on this side it says now draw a cartoon and show what frog might say to the robins at the end of the story do you remember at the end of the story how their kite was flying way higher than the the robins could fly so he could say something like see it was a good kite you know, maybe I should make a little bubble for him to say it in. See, it was a good kite. Or something like, um, it's flying higher than you are. You know, something like that. All right. So here are our, our we're going to be practicing our spelling words. We're actually going to alphabetize them. Remember our spelling words? They all end with not end, but they use the I, E, I, G, H, and Y spellings, the ending Y spellings, to spell the I sound. So we're going to actually be alphabetizing them. And so here, here's this list, okay? Remember when we alphabetize, then we sing our ABC song and put them in the order of the, you have to look at the first letter and put them in the order um, of the alphabet. So we have the words my, sky, by, try, fly. And I'm just going to sing my alphabet song. And when I get to a letter that I see at the beginning of my words, I'm going to move that word to the top. So A, no A's. <clears throat> B, oh my goodness, I have a little frog in my throat. C, D, E, F, there's an F right there, I'm gonna, so I'm going to put it underneath the B word, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, there's M, oh, M's already in the right spot, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, oh, there's an S right there, T, 
T, U, V. They're, okay, now they're in order. So let's write them down in this order, because this is an ABC order. I sang the ABC song just to make sure. So by, fly, my, sky, and try. Hey, all of those spelling words use the Y to make the long I sound. Okay, we're done with that side. They're in ABC order. By fly my sky, try. So now, while you're writing those, I'm going to go ahead and start singing my ABC song again. And here are our words. We have dry, cried, light, whoopsie, and pie and night. Dry, cried, light, pie, night. Dry, cried, light, pie, night. Okay, I'm going to sing my song. A, none of them start with A, B, no Bs at the beginning. C, there's a C word I'm putting at the top. D, I already have it there. E, no E's. F, remember I'm only looking at the beginning. G, H, I, J, K, L, hey, the L's already there. M, N, flip it up to right there. O, P, now they're in order. I can stop right there. Now we're going to write these words in this order right here. Okay, so what does that one say? Cur, oh, the I, E, it spells the I sound. Cried, cried. Cried, dry, that Y spelled I, light, that I-G-H, L, and then this spells I, that's right, that G-H is silent, it just makes the I say its name, light, okay, next is night, 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 and pi. Pi uses the I E to spell the I sound, just like cried uses the I E to spell the I sound. K or I D, cried, and pi. Okay, we're going to put these up. We're done with that page. Now we just have one more. Adjectives for sound and texture. Do you guys remember what adjectives are? So adjectives are words that describe nouns or pronouns. So they're words that tell more about persons, places, or things. So let's look at some examples. They have no pictures on this page. So I have some picture cards. So here's an alarm clock. Um, I can say this is an, a noisy alarm clock, a loud alarm clock. Oh, this can be a clanging bell, a ringing bell. Clanging and ringing are adjectives. They're telling more about it. I can also say it's a gold um, bell, but I'm trying to stick with the sound words. Okay, oh, that's a very loud, noisy, maybe a deafening phone, um, uh, what do you call it? Ringing phone. Definitely drum sets are, def are deafening. So a deafening drum set, a loud drum set. Oh, here's a woolly, warm sheep. Right, woolly and warm, tell more about it. They're adjectives, woolly and warm. Here's a furry cat. Here's a hard, cold ice cube. Here's a prickly porcupine. So th these, this word tells more, it's an adjective. Here is, uh, well, it's a wet umbrella now, a wet umbrella. 
Okay, so anyways, just remember that adjectives tell more about persons, places, things, or animals. Okay, so we're going to draw a line under each adjective, and then we're going to write the adjective. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this up, and when I do that, I'm going to have to change this autofocus to right about there, I think, yeah. So, we sail on the smooth lake. What kind of lake? Smooth lake. That word smooth tells more about the lake. It's not a choppy lake. It's going to be easy to sail on that because the water is smooth. must not be windy. Okay, I hear the loud cry of a seagull. Okay, it's a loud cry. What kind of cry? A loud one. Loud is the adjective. It tells more about the word cry. It was a loud cry, not a soft cry or a wimpy cry. It was a loud cry of a seagull. The blanket feels warm. Oh, warm tells more about the blanket, about how it feels. So let's go ahead and write the word warm. Warm is an adjective. It tells more. Okay, and I have to go ahead and underline warm, and I have to go ahead and underline smooth, because that's what they told us to do. We're supposed to draw a line under each of the adjectives and then write it. Now it says draw a line under each adjective and add commas where they are needed. Okay, so if there's a list of adjectives in a sentence, then you need to separate those adjectives with commas. Okay, so the beat was noisy, loud, and pounding. So sometimes you're listening to the radio or iTunes or whatever. And a song is noisy, comma. Oh, we have to draw the, a line underneath it because it's an adjective. Loud, comma, and pounding. Okay, those are our three adjectives, our three words that tell more about the beat. The beat was noisy, loud, and pounding. The music was soft, catchy, and nice. Oh, it's telling us more about the music they were listening to. It was soft, comma, catchy, comma, and nice. Is that all? Let's see, I think we're done. One, two, and three. All right, boys and girls, I had fun. I hope you guys learned something. Bye-bye.